seated in the presence of the Lord. God is good. Let's go right into our Bibles tonight. First Samuel chapter 15. First Samuel chapter 15. Listen, tonight if I say anything you don't understand, you can ask questions. So don't just let me preach the word, but ask questions that pertain to the word and we can grow and learn. Because not everything that we say, sometimes we, we come across and you just say amen, but you don't get what we're saying. So you want to understand what is being said on tonight. Is that okay? Who's here for the first time? If this is your first time on a Tuesday night, raise your hands. Very first time on a Tuesday night. Y'all got to invite some people on a Tuesday night, y'all. Amen. Invite them. Gas stations. Winn-Dixie, 7-Eleven, whenever you stop, look for divine appointments. Whenever you stop, look for divine appointments. I'm sure somebody's coming up to some of y'all, but y'all just, you're brushing them off. You got to make your divine appointments and invite them to the house of God. Amen? If you go to breakfast somewhere, you go out, to bed, going down to, to, to the Jamaican restaurant, greet somebody. But don't catch no fish that you're not willing to clean. Amen. You make sure you catch some good fish. Some what? some good fish. First Samuel chapter 15. Tonight we're going to be talking about justification. Just for what? Justification. justification. Justifying. So we're going to be talking tonight about justifying and in justifying we do not want to get not understand. A lot of things that I say up here y'all is life principles. Is what? So if you apply it in life, you learn. If you don't apply it, then you go round and round and round and round and round and round and? Uh, how many of you want to keep going around the same thing until you're 90? So if you apply the life principle, then you get it. Somebody say, Lord, help me to get it. Lord, help me to get it. One of the things I want to say is, I always say this, and you say amen, but I want you to get this. Anytime someone apologizes to you and they say, but, it's never a real apology. So if somebody ever comes to you, or even if you say but, you really don't mean the apology. Uh, a but is a justification. That means you're getting ready to justify why you did, why you, why you did what you did. A true apology, whether right or wrong, it's I want you to forgive me. Whether, the, whether you're right or wrong. Most of us, we wait to justify because we want to be what? So now you know nobody in this room talked to me. I had no phone calls. Nobody called me. So nobody think I'm talking to nobody in particular. Nobody watching think. It's just I felt tonight that we need to understand justification in growing up and being able to understand why it's important not to justify. Justifying only, it causes the situation to go worse. And, and we're going to learn tonight God does not like when we justify. Who does not like it? Because what we're doing, making excuses. What we're doing? We're making excuses, so don't ever apologize with a but, because but is usually justification. So, First Samuel chapter 15, let's ride. Happy birthday to everybody that's having birthdays. We had about three birthdays today. Happy birthday to you all. We got a birthday surprise for you all after service, but so don't think that we forgot you. Happy birthday. It's good to celebrate people's birthday. Amen? Samuel, in verse 1, Samuel also said unto Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over the people over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken unto to the voice of the words of the Lord. Are you there? Only Jonathan in the room. Are we in verse 1? Verse 2 said, Thus said the Lord of hosts. I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he, what he did, laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite the Amalekites. Smite who? Is that what it said? Now go, thank you, go, now go and smite the, Amalek, the Amalekites or the Amalek or the Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have. Utterly do what? Now I have a question for you. Is that instructions clear? What does he tell them to do? What does destroy mean? Okay, it is okay to say the word kill. It means get rid of everything, right? Can we say kill it? Somebody say kill it. So he said destroy everything. So is that, is, that, um, is that message or that command, does that leave room to say, but leave something alive? It clearly says to do what? Thank you, Rosie. Destroy everything. Are you all with me? He said, now go and smite the, and destroy all that they have. Spare, none, spare them not, but slay boat what? Slay boat. Thank you, Stacy. Men and women, infant. Is that right? Suckling ox, sheep, camel, and donkey. So I say kill everything. 
Verse 4, and Saul. Somebody say, and Saul. So God now giving them instruction. Who's giving them instructions? God is now giving them instructions, and he's telling them, when you go to Amalekites, when you go to the tent, or you go into the camp, destroy everything. That means get rid of everything. And he gave them specific instructions just in case you don't understand. Let me tell you what everything means. It means the babies. It means the animals. And he gave, he gave definition of what everything meant. Are we okay? So let's ride. Some of us, we hear... You, we God tell us to cut some things off, and how many of you know for some of us that means cut them off for a month? We, we sort of, how many of you know we hear what we want to hear when we already had specific instructions? Is that right? Okay, let's go. And I want to say this too, I've already started teaching, partial obedience is disobedience. So if God gives you specific instructions not to do, and you do it halfway, you disobey it. So you cannot say, I obeyed halfway, because if you obeyed halfway, it, it nullifies everything, Aaron. It means it's complete disobedience. So you can't partially obey the Lord. You got to fully obey him. What you got to do? Now, that isn't to condemn anybody. Nobody feel like I'm picking on them. I want you to hear that. So know that if I obey halfway, that I'm being disobedient. If God gives me specific instructions, I got to see the thing all the way. I can't do it halfway and then say, I expect to get the blessings of God. If you want the blessings of God, you have to learn to obey completely. Learn to obey what? Completely. And Saul gathered the people together, and he numbered them. Let's go to verse 6. And Saul said unto the Canaanites, Go depart, get you down from among the Amalekites. Least, I'm in verse 6, so anybody at home, they could see it in the Bible. Least I destroy you with them, that ye show, that ye showed kindness to all the children of Israel. Am I still in the book? When they came up out of Egypt, so the, so the Canaanites departed from among the Amalekites. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havala. Is that what it says? Havalia, until thou comest to Shur. That is over against Egypt. And he took Agag. Who he took? Yeah. The king of the Malachites alive. What he did? He took him alive. Now, I just want we go with this. This is Bible study tonight. What is this? Did God tell him to kill everything? Yeah. So what did he choose to do? This, he kept the king alive. So he did not obey. What he did? He did not obey the instructions of the Lord. So right here now, when we disobey God, all of us need to know we take it for granted, but there are consequences to disobeying God. Somebody say amen. amen. Sometimes we don't, may not see the consequences here, but sometimes our children uh, uh, pay the price. So not because we don't reap it doesn't mean immediately, doesn't mean it don't come to pass. A lot of times when I mess up on God or I do things wrong, I say to God, have mercy on over me in judgment. So it's okay to cry mercy. That means that he will give you the grace to deal with whatever you got to deal with. But that means something is coming. Why? Because we disobeyed. Because we what? So there's no way around that. That's not to frighten you, but you got to hear that. My disobedience will bring consequence. Let's go. The Bible says, and he took Agag, the king of the Amalekite, and kept him alive. And he utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. So he destroyed the people, but he kept the king alive. Didn't seem like much, right? Look at verse 9. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep. And what? And the best of the sheep, of the oxen, of the fatlings, of the lambs, and all that was good. And would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile... And refuse that they destroyed utterly. <laughs> Anybody see how we roll? Let me try it again. Anybody in this scripture see how we roll? We destroy what we want to destroy. And we keep alive what we want to keep alive. So we tell God, God, some things I can get rid of, but what feels good I ain't getting rid of. No, but this message may not be for everybody. This teacher may not be. But there's a reason why he's telling you to get rid of everything because he knows what has been defiled because everything that looks good is not good. So if God is telling you to get rid of something, he's not telling you to get rid of something because he's trying to harm you. He's trying to tell you to get rid of it because he knows what is best for you. Now, let me bring that into 2021. It's what day of the, what day of the 20th? The, the fifth day. 
If I tell you in a relationship that the relationship be friends, be what? And you interpret friendship as boyfriend and girlfriend. And I spell, how many of you know we know exactly what friendship means? If I say, if I say no touchy, no feely, no kissy, am I trying to control you? What I'm trying to do is guide you so that you will do things correctly because you don't want your relationship to end up in the flesh. Because a lot of times if it ends up in the flesh, you lose perspective and what the call is, what God's plan is, what God's destiny is. And you lose, you get caught up in the soulless realm and not God's plan for that relationship. So it sets your whole life, of course, when you start to do things your way. Only Pastor Kokroff. So when you get instructions on how to do it, as much as you may feel like it, as much as you, I don't understand why, you know, one time I told someone they were wrong. I really just, dis- and this is not no one in the building. This happened in New Smyrna Beach with a leader that I had at the time. Somebody had offended them and they had done something wrong. And the person who offended them was wrong. What were they? They were wrong. But when the leader came to me, I told the leader, I said, you need to go to that person and say to them, forgive you. They got 96 odd. Because they couldn't understand why I was sending them to go to them to ask forgiveness and they didn't do nothing. A lot of times, God may challenge you to do something even though you didn't do wrong because he's trying to kill something in you. One, again, this Bible study. He may challenge you to do it because he's trying to, he's trying to teach you obedience. Because we may have a hard times with leadership. We have a hard time with being obedient. We want to do our own thing. And some, no woman in this church, it was a young lady. And sometimes women have a tendency to hold on to things longer than us men. I wish I had one woman to say amen that right there. Y'all ain't say, I ain't trying to pick on you. But women have brains like elephants. They don't forget nothing. Some of all the men should have said amen. If you did something wrong to a woman last year in the mall, and some of the women even looking at me right now, they so mad. If you did something wrong to her last year in the mall, and the, the whole year has gone, she could, will wait till an opportune time, or the next argument, something go in. And she said, I remember when you did this to me in the mall. And then men, we're thinking, what did I do? And then what makes them more angry is you don't remember. <laughs> and then she could tell you what you were wearing. She could tell you what time of day it was, what kind of car you were driving. And for us, we're like, what are you talking about? But she remembers the exact, all the men should have said amen. Amen. Because they have a tendency. So sometimes, women, God will challenge you to come out of your comfort zone. He will challenge you to say, I'm sorry, or forgive me, even when you're, when you're, when you're not wrong. And that's hard to do sometimes. Because well, I, well, I got to always be the one. Because you're thinking, why well, I always got to be the one to say apologize? Let him apologize. But a lot of times, you got to understand, God may be asking you to do that. Because God may be trying to teach you something. In that, it may be even be teaching him something. And sometimes, you kill an argument because people want want an argument they want a reason to disagree so the bible says learn to agree with your you're shaking your head but you got to hear this because a lot of us we don't do it and if you don't do it you won't grow you're gonna stay in one place you don't you won't mature or it could cause you to miss what god have for you everything that looks good say that say everything that looks good is not good meaning god told him to destroy that this is scripture and i can tell you how we roll if you get a better offer in Atlanta, honey, I know you're watching, and God tells you to come to Orlando and be at Jump Ministries, but the offer at Jump Ministries ain't paying you $50,000, but New York is paying you a hundred plus thousand. But God said, go to Orlando and start with 50. Guess what we can think? I miss God. Because there's no way God can send me for less. But how many of you know God is not sending you so much for less, but you don't know what may come with that 50,000? Listen to what I'm saying. If you don't just say, man, Lord, I pray, I will help you all tonight. If you come to Orlando and versus going to New York, and let's say you settle for the 50,000 in the beginning, if you settle with that 50,000, you don't know how 
Your relationship may be birth if you come. That means God may give you a husband or God may give you a wife because you're obedient. God may give you a home. God may, what might have been cost so much more in New York, it won't because you're moving in the favor of God. So the price you would have to pay in New York versus the price you have to pay in Orlando is far different because you're walking under obedience. So a lot of people are missing out on what God has for them. Guess why? Because they're not walking in obedience, Quinn. They're looking at what looks good. Nobody in this church. They're looking at what feels good, but the key part of what they're missing is obedience. And they wonder, why am I not being blessed? You're not being blessed because you were not obedient to say what God told you to say. You're not obedient to do what God gave you a command to do. And you still haven't followed the command. And you wonder why I'm not blessed. You're not blessed because you're not following the command. A, what, what, what Samuel did was Samuel went into the town. He saw what looked good to his eyes. The people saw what was good to their eye, and they decided to do what they wanted to do after God gave them the command. So you got to, one of the things the devil will always make you feel or think in the midst of obedience is he will make you think that your way is better than any other way. Very good, Pastor Gogo. Not just better than any way I want to say that specifically. He'll make you think that your way is better than God's way. He'll make you think you miss it. But maybe I didn't hear right. But maybe Bishop didn't mean it like that. Because what happens is you begin to justify it. Why? Because it's what your flesh wants. So you got to find a reason to justify why I left church. You got to find a reason why I stopped calling. You got to find a reason why I stopped coming to church. Well, I was coming to prayer meeting. And when I came, you know, they didn't like the way I looked. They didn't like, they was looking at me funny. So we make excuses to do what, what feels good for us. I wish I had somewhere. We make excuses to justify why we angry. We make excuses to justify why we mad. We make excuses to justify why we had sex. We make excuses to justify why we hold on the grudge. We make excuses to justify why we want a divorce. We make excuses. It may not be God's will, so we got to justify it. So what do we do? We make a because we want, and let me tell you what it boils down to, whoever I'm talking to, it boils down to you wanting what you want. It boils down to me wanting to do me. Anybody ever heard, but I won't do me for a season. Just let me do me. But how many of you know it's you that do you that got you in a whole lot of... So a lot of times we say, just let us do me. But if you really look at your lifelong history of you doing you, you didn't do a good job doing you. So what makes you think now that, uh, <laughs> it's tight in here. So all of a sudden, right, when we start doing a little good, we think doing me works. Until doing me go wrong. So now when doing me go wrong, we got to justify why it went wrong. So what happens? It becomes somebody else's fault. Because, because of my disobedience. Somebody say because of my disobedience. Uh, if you, somebody's talking about, I, you know what I hear a lot of people say that we have to be so careful of what people say, I fell out of love. When did you fall? I, I don't just want you to laugh, I want you to think about that. When did you fall? First of all, if you fell in love, so to speak, if you fell in love, what did you have to do to fall in love? You had to court. You got to know the person. You found out what they enjoyed, what they liked. It, so if, if it took you having to court and get to know the person, it took work. The same way you feel like you're falling out of love, you got to put that same investment in to work on whatever is being lost, to work it to come back, take them out, get to know them, spend time, communicate. What's happening is you're using something as a distraction, bitterness, or anger as an excuse to justify you doing what you want to do. So if you can keep it real, tell somebody, keep it real. If you can keep it real, most times when we do anything, Joey, right or wrong, we like to justify why we did it. It's never nobody else's fault. It's never our fault. It's always somebody else's fault. Now watch, and I want you to show you from the Old Testament that nature hasn't changed. That nature hasn't changed change your mama didn't make you do it your daddy didn't make you do it bishop didn't make you do it the leaders didn't make you do it you chose to do it tell somebody i chose to do it responsibility let's go 
But Saul and the people spared Agag, the best man, verse 9, of the sheep, of the oxen, this is the people now, the fatlings and the lamb, and all that was good, and would, and would not utterly destroy it after God already gave the command, Chris. But everything that was vile and refused, everything they didn't like, that was easy. I, got, I could throw it, okay, I'll kill that, but I ain't killing everything. Then came the word of the Lord to Samuel saying, it repented me that I have set up Saul to be king. Here comes the consequence. For he, for he is turned back from following me. Who's he turned back from? How do you know he turned back from following God? Because his eyes saw what he wanted, so he decided to disobey God. His actions is telling it. It ain't hard to understand. God said he has turned back from following me because he saw what he wanted and he went after it. So a lot of times when we want to do what we, if somebody in here tonight, you're doing what you want to do and there's more than one person. You're doing what you want to do and you're justifying it. But you need to know if it doesn't line up with the word of God, there is consequences for justifying it. You might as well say, God, I'm wrong. Let me tell you what is easy to do. What is easy to do is say, God, I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong. I don't want to do this. Take the desire away from me. God, help me fight it. But don't justify doing it like you're right because it only makes your situation worse. Have a repentive heart. Hate it. Say, God, I don't want it. Say, God, the thing that I will to do, I don't want it. I, I, I don't do it. The things that I hate, I find myself doing. God, I'm battling. Please keep me. Come to this altar, but don't start justifying it because you're going justi to justify yourself right out of the blessing and the promises God have for you. That was a good place to clap your hands. Somebody say this. Say, Satan is trying to rob me. And guess who he's trying to use to rob you? You. He's trying to use you to rob you. By your disobedience, by saying, I'm getting older and I'm going to do what I want to do. Ah, 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 this ain't happened for me yet, so I'm going to make it happen. You got to be careful. And again, every one of us got to examine. I'm, I've been in this church for so long and I'm not a leader yet. I've been in the church and I've been given and I see no results yet. And so when we don't see things happen according to our agenda, and I hear you, God. And let me tell you why God has to delay some things for us. God has to delay some things for us because how many of you know the test will bring away? What's in you so when you start getting angry you don't know you got anger until something happened for you to get angry about anybody can say they patient when you're in a patient situation anybody can say they're given when you win and you got it to give it's when you are in a back is against the wall and someone frustrates you can you still be patient so the test is what brings out what's in you so what you do in the middle of a test shows you what's still gotta die in you what you do, man, if I had money, this is what I would do. That's easy to say when you got it. A broke person can say anything. I'll bless anybody. No, sir. When you get the money, that's when you begin to change. Boy, if I get in a relationship, me and my partner, we can bless God. Bless with God. You get a relationship, we don't even see you in church no more. So the test brings out what's in you. It's easy to say you will turn the other cheek until someone really slap you. If someone hit me, I'll turn the other cheek. You ain't get hit yet, baby. Be careful for the test. Only one person got that. Let's look at verse 12. Verse 11. He said, God said, it repented me that I have set up Saul to be king. For he has turned back from following me and had not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel and he cried unto the Lord all night. And when Samuel rose early in the, to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel saying, Saul came to Carmel, to Carmel. Behold, he set up a place and has gone about and passed on and gone down to Gilgad. Where are you going down to? Gilgad. Saul thought, now I'm straight. I did what God wanted me to do. God ain't seen nothing. How many of you know God see everything? God see why we do what we do, Rosie. I want to say, if I say anything in this room, it's good to keep your heart right before God, not your face right before me. Because I could read your face, but God could read your heart. So it's good to understand that any service I do, when God looks, God is looking at my heart. And your heart posture will determine whether you move forward with the blessings of God or you stay stuck until you pass the test. It's not that God doesn't reward you, but he has to work things out of you. Let's go. This is Bible study. You could ask questions. It ain't got to be me doing all the preaching and you walk out here still stuck in your heart. I'm trying to help you. 
Let's look at verse 12. And when Samuel rose early in the meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel saying, Saul came to Camel. Let's look at 13. And Samuel came to Saul and said, Saul, said unto him, blessed be thou of the Lord. I love his salutation. He just feels straight. Pastor Kerr, I'm so glad to hear. He said, blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed, now what's up? He said, I have performed, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. What did he say? Anybody see this beside me? He's like, yeah, I got it going on. I did what the Lord said. Facial, 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 facial. But God is read, God doesn't read him. God already saw his heart. A lot of us, we walk in church, we got to understand how we walking in here. Are we walking in with bitterness? Are we walking here angry, secretly angry? Are we walking in here secretly sneaking and doing things on the side and thinking, man, I'm getting away with it? Or are you doing things on the side and saying, God, I'm hating this. I don't want to do this, God. I want to change. And are you fighting to change? Or are you with a person thinking, I'm getting away with it? So if you're the person, because that's what Saul thinking. Saul thinking, hey, I have performed. Does he sound repentant? That maybe it ain't me. I, again, let me. Does he sound repentant? No. Sound like he did. The, he's saluting. And Samuel came to Saul and said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What mean it then? <laughs> Watch what he said. Okay, if you could perform it. Samuel said to him, What mean it then the bleeding of the sheep in my ears and the lowering of oxen which I hear? Somebody say, Caught. Okay, that's five years. Say caught. Caught red-handed. Watch this. And Saul said, this is now he caught. Now he what? With his hand in the cookie jar. Say red-handed. He caught. Watch his action. And Saul said, they have brought. And Saul said, they have brought them from the Malachites for the people. Anybody see this? For the people. Them people in jump. (laughs) My family. My daddy. That bishop. Bishop. If he had just let me do. If he had just let me go. If he had just signed the papers. Was it Samuel that was wrong? Who was wrong? Because did God give Saul the command? Has God given you a command? Okay, do we know in the church right from wrong? Do you know when you're holding a grudge? Do you know when you're doing things secretly? Okay, let me show you our hearts, Chris. And Saul said, they have brought them from the Malachites, for the people spared the best of the sheep. Who spared it? The best of the sheep, of the oxen. This, watch this. This is even worse. Why did they spare it? To sacrifice. So you know what he made it look like? We did this for God. <laughs> Isn't that just like us? Well, God, at least I brought them to you. I brought them to church. They help out in church. But is that what God told you to do? So, so <laughs> oh my God. Somebody say, it cannot be your way. It can't be your way in God's way, y'all. You can't do it your way and expect to get the blessings of God. If God say no sex before marriage, it's supposed to be clink, clink, clink. What clink, clink, clink means? It ain't, it ain't means move them in. Lord, the whole church goes quiet. It ain't means when Bishop ain't looking, I'll bring him over, and then afterwards I'll send him away. It means what? No. It means no sex before. I don't care even if you dating a person. Well, you know, we dating and we can be, you know what? Let me, also let me, can I bring the justifying in now? Well, we're dating and we will be married. So what's wrong with? Uh, that's one thing we hear. And you know what another thing we hear? Is we in love. And there is common law marriage. <laughs> 
You know what else we say? Everybody else doing it. But how many of you know everybody else isn't going where God is trying to take you? Come on, clap your hand if you hear that. Clap your hand if you hear that. And what a lot of us do, nobody in this church, but that church around the corner, a lot of us, we look at what other people are doing. And then we say, they getting away with it. Guess what you're doing when you say that? You're justifying. See, y'all said it, I didn't. You're justifying. You already know what's wrong. So you're finding a way to justify your wrong rather than say, I'm wrong. I shouldn't be doing this. I, was, I disobeyed God. But you could tell that he's not repentive. Let me tell you how you know when someone is not repentive. To just, I hear you, God. You see how I started? You know how you know I'm preaching, right? I started out talking about an apology, right? Now watch how the Holy Spirit is flipping it. The Holy Spirit is saying, the apology is just like the justification. When they say but, and, they say, and then they blame others, they're justifying just like how you told them. They really don't mean the apology when they say but. So when you start blaming other people and saying other people are doing it, you're justifying it and you're no longer repentive. That means you don't care about what you're doing. And when you don't care about what you're doing, you're setting yourself to be robbed. It isn't just that you're getting away with it. You're going to get robbed. Listen, and that ain't somebody trying to speak something over you. Who comes to kill? Satan. Steal and what? So the, if I'm doing, if I'm justifying, I'm going to get robbed. God help all of us. Saul did not know by his disobedience, he was setting himself up to get the throne taken from him. This is where God rejected Saul. God rejected Saul and gave the throne to, da to, to, to David because of what? Because he was disobedient. But guess what? David also sinned. Why would God keep David and reject Saul and both sin? It's because when David sinned, David didn't justify. When that prophet came to David, David said, God, against you and you alone have I sinned and did this evil. He didn't say, well, if Bathsheba was invading on the roof. Because if he had said that, that would tell you where David's heart was. See, when you really love, you don't think about you first. You think about others. Because what, I move sad, that was so good right there. Because what love thinks about is not how it satisfies self. Love lays its life down for others. So when a person gets married or gets in a relationship, it's no longer about you. So you don't do right just to do right. You do right because you know other people are involved. So when Saul blamed the people, what was Saul showing God? He only cared about himself and not the people. So God couldn't use Saul. Let me tell you what. Oh, I hope you all are listening, Amanda. So the people who he's supposed to take care of, he threw under the bus. How are you supposed to be a leader and the people you take care of when you first caught is from under the bus? A true leader or someone who really cares, they say, I will take the brunt for that person because I will lay down my life for that person. That's why no greater love than a man lay down his life for a friend. So when you really care for somebody, it's almost like you will take the bullet for them. That's why you fight. You fight because you know I got my family to, that I want to save. I fight because I know there are people that look up to me. I fight because I want my cousin, my nieces, my nephew, my mother, my father. I'm not just fighting for me, Joey. I'm fighting for my family that's not here. So when you give up and you say, well, I don't want to go to church no more. I don't want God no more. Man, I'm leaving church. I'm out of here. What does that tell you? It's about you. And when, yeah, you got that, Miss Sherry. And when it's about you, God is saying, I can't use you because you don't understand. This is bigger than you. Your part in church is not just you coming to church. Your part on the sound or your part in the, in the boot or your part in praise and worship or that. It's not just about you. And why a lot of people leave church and they get angry? Who do they make it about? Themselves. Well, I didn't get nothing. What they did to me. How they harmed me. How they disrespected me. And God is saying, that's why I can't get what I have for you. Because you're not willing to deny yourself. Take up your cross. And follow me. Love is not supposed to be easy. Find me anywhere in the Bible where love is supposed to be easy. 
Find me anywhere in the Bible where love doesn't require sacrifice. But when we get in relationships, some of us, we start thinking of the beach and the moon and the stars. And when the beach, the moon, the stars over and we see fire, storm, and hail, we're like, I'm out of here. But he never told you it was not going to be fire. He never told you there was not going to be storm and hail. You wanted, the, you wanted the, the crown without the cross. And he said, if anyone come after me, let him first deny himself and take up his cross. You should be asking questions. It doesn't mean relationships don't end because of whatever consequence, whatever came, if you do your best. But you make sure at the end of the day, God, I did all that I know to do and they chose to leave. Not that I choose to leave. Only JB. That was a good place to clap your hands. That was a good place to clap your hands. <laughs> Say obedience is better than sacrifice. Saul was disobedient. He wanted to do his things his own way. And because he wanted to do things his own way, watch what happened. Let's read. And Samuel said, what is this that I hear? We read at 15. And Saul said, they have brought them forth from the Amalekites. The people spared the best of the sheep. Yeah, the people. As a sacrifice unto the Lord, their God. And the test we have utterly, and the rest, would we have done? 16. Then Samuel said unto Saul, stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord had said to me this night. And he said unto him, say on. And Samuel said, when thou was little, when thou was what? Yeah. See, what happens is, when we small, y'all ain't want to hear the truth. Y'all want to hear the truth? When we start doing good, we forget that it was God that helped us to do good. We start getting a new car, new house, a little bit of money, a better job, a little bit of stuff under our name, get married, get a little spouse, get a little, and then we forget when we, was, when we didn't have anything, it was easy for us to listen. And then we start getting on. It's almost like when a child, anybody ever saw it? Our parents would tell us, you're getting grown. Let me try it again. Has anybody, parent, ever told them you're getting a little grown? That means you feel like you could tell the parent what to do. You're still a child. You're still in their house. They're paying all the bills. They're feeding you. But you don't want to listen to them no more. Why? Because you're getting grown. The same thing happens to us when we get a little car, a little house, a little age, a little money, a little blessing. We start to get grown. And we forget what brought us into the blessing. Listen to what the first thing he said. He said, when you were small, before you became king, it was easier for you. Let's read. Somebody here is dealing with pride. And pride coming before fall. You can't forget where you come from. Because when you do that, you're setting yourself up for failure. And even if you forget, you say, Lord, help me not to forget. Say, Lord, help me to remember everything I have is because of you. He said, when you were small, how do you know? Because he began, his action declared he forgot. That's right. He said... And Samuel said, when thou was little in thine own eyes, was thou not made head of the tribes of Israel when you was little? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore, that thou, wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord? But did his fly upon the spoil and did his evil in the sight of the Lord. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice. Y'all, we say, Well, how many of you know we're just like that? You know what he's doing? He's talking back to the parent. Yea, you know what he's trying to do too? Have the last word. Has anybody in this room ever did that? You're setting yourself up for trouble with the Lord. He's in trouble now for what he didn't do. God made him king. And now that he's caught Pastor Kokov, he's justifying it. And he's being called out. And even being called out, watch this honorary something. 
Watch how prideful he is, Chris. Yea. Am I right? What verse am I on? Thank you. He's, and, Saul, and Samuel said, Yea. And, and, and Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag the king and the Malachite, and have utterly destroyed the Malachites. But the people, not once, again, he's saying, but the people took of the spoil, the sheep, the oxen, the chief things. Why was Saul, did the people take of it? Yeah. But what made it bad? He influenced it. So it's king, if he had told them not to do it, would they have obeyed? So when they get caught, that's like, <laughs> that's like you going with your homie to go rob something. And I, <laughs> oh, these is loving this. And the police come and they look and they say, look here, I was in the car, but let me tell you where all the stuff is. John got it at his house. I only drive. So what they trying to do is, they trying to get John to get all the trouble, and they trying to escape. So it showed you Saul didn't care nothing about the people that he led. The only person that really mattered to Saul was himself. At the end of the day, you got to ask yourself, who matters to you? Let me say this. You ain't got to hear this, but I'm going to tell you. Sin will make you make a choice. I'm going to say to Jacob again. Sin will make you make a choice. Say why? No man could serve two masters. So whatever you going after, sooner or later, you're going to have to make a choice of who you want, what you want, because you can't serve both. And disobedience, whenever you're disobedient, you've made your choice. It's just a matter of time before you leave the church. Because disobedience leads to you making, doing what you want, what pleases you. And when you, when you just choose what pleases you, the only thing you're going to do then is justify. Well, they called me first. If they didn't call me, then I wouldn't talk to them. They gave, a lot of people, they get phone numbers. Well, they gave me the number. Not that you asked for it. You never told, but they gave me their number. How did they get it? Um, and they call me. Why did you answer? <laughs> they started talking. And, and when they started talking, I just let them talk. Well, I thought talking means you got to listen. So if they talk, you have to listen. You know the old people used to say growing up, nobody would tell the truth. I'll say it in this room. You know they used to say the thief is just as bad as the receiver. Well, I didn't have no part with it. You had every part to do with it if you listened. Somebody say amen. He told him kill the sheep, kill the oxen, kill the king, kill everybody. He didn't say even, he said even kill the children. He said destroy everything. Some of us, we won't keep things alive in our life. Well, they don't go to church no more, but I still got calling with them. I still talk with them on occasion. If you got a door open, you got to understand, close all the doors. Somebody say amen. Somebody say close all the doors. Only Amanda. Say it again. Say, close all the doors. What you got the doors cracked for? Why are they still in your phone? Why are they still on your Facebook chat? What you communicating with that old love for every three months? <laughs> we ain't in no relationship. Why are y'all still communicating? Well, we ain't dating. We just friends. Why you ain't close the door? Uh, but we ain't dating. I dating somebody else and they dating somebody else. We just like to talk. Something's still undercurrent going on. You don't want to destroy it. You don't want to close it. Somebody say, close the door. I could point out who I'm talking to in here tonight. That's how sure I am. You are not, you are still entertaining things. You want God's best, but you have not destroyed everything that God told you to destroy. You got to get rid of it. Your best friend cannot be a weed dealer. That can't be your boy. 
Because you and your boy go in separate ways. You cannot date the girl till she gets saved. <laughs> Say close the door. How can two walk together except they are? So how your plan get greater than God? That's a good place to clap your hand. That's a good place to clap your hand. That's a good place. <laughs> well, I know. Let me tell you. Well, they talk about God, so I know they can get saved sooner or later. <laughs> what you doing? Well, they go to church. They just don't come to jump. What you doing? You justifying. Oh, oh, oh somebody only looking at why you only looking at me. Look at somebody in the eye and say, stop justifying. justifying. Let me tell you why, if you want God's best. So you got to determine when you leave here tonight, will you justify it or do you want God's best? And let me say this for anybody, if I, uh, tonight you could ask questions. Some things are hard to get rid of. Some habits are hard to break. But let me tell you something, you got to want it broken. The thing is, you got to ask yourself, do I want it to be broken? Because if you don't want it to be broken, guess what you can do? You can justify it. Well, we only, I only invite them over to see a movie. <laughs> you know you're inviting them more than to see a movie. And they know you're inviting them more to see the movie. But I, and you know another two people tell you to be accountable? Well, ain't nobody in church I trust. Get out of here. You know why ain't nobody in church you trust? Look, let me try it again. Let's take it from the top. Do you know why ain't nobody in church you trust? Because you ain't want to be accountable. Because who you trust can tell you the right thing to do. Or, you know what we say? They ain't understand. <laughs> why we gonna say they understand? Because we justifying. Because we want to do what we want to do. And let me, just, let me say this too. I don't know why I'm going here. None of us in this room should be listening to secular music. How you got Mary J. Blige on your Instagram, on your phone? How your music is Mary J. Oh, now all y'all gone quiet. Yeah. Lil Wayne, Lil Lord, love song. What you loving? What you loving? And then you wonder why you think the things you're thinking. You're wondering why you lust or why you're struggling with lust. It's because what you feed in your spirit. You're wondering why you want, why you, what are you, what are you putting in your spirit, them songs? What is behind those songs? Demons go off a of sound. Why you think drums? We you know this was done today. People beat drums in, in, in witchcraft. So when you listen to music, you think I'm just listening to music. That is going into your spirit. So those things influence you subconsciously. So why you, how, you could listen, you could, some of y'all here, you could jam song, but you can't quote no scriptures? <laughs> Shouldn't I tell you something wrong? <laughs> you can see with the lister, you got their songs, their words, you know, all the secular singers, you know them on the dime. What are you feeding your spirit? Then we wonder why we struggle in our minds, why we struggle sexually, why we feel in pull, why we don't want to go to church, why we want to sneak and creep, because you've been feeding your spirit, and whatever you feed your spirit, you can hunger for. Whatever you feed, you can be hungry for. So you ain't just lusting, you've been feeding lust. Say, ouch. And if you've been feeding lust, that's what you can be hungry for. You've been feeding bitterness. You've been feeding anger. You've been feeding frustration. You've been feeding loneliness. And whatever you feed, you can be hungry for. Somebody say, stop feeding it. And one of the ways you stop feeding it is cut off the secular music. Start worship. God adores worship. If God adores worship, put on worship music. And you know he adores it. He inhabits the praises of his people. You know healing comes with worship. Revelation comes with worship. Ideas come with worship. Inventions come with worship. Because God wants to speak. But if you got a different sound in your ear, how could God speak to you? 
Why do you think God calls us to a fast? He's not just calling us to a fast at the beginning of the year to say, what do you do? Are we fast? He's trying to get us to hear what he's trying to do, what he wants to do through us, what he wants to get to us. He's trying to get us so we could be open to, to direction, to insight, to what he wants to set the pace, to the tricks, to the schemes of the enemy. He's trying to get us to fight. So he's trying to get us to, for the things to come before they come so we will be strong against it. That's why we're fasting at the beginning of the year. So we are spiritually strong to stand when doubt come, fear come, anger come, frustration come, leave the church come, thoughts come. I don't want to be here. I want to move to Miami. I want to move to California. Man, I'm out of here. I, I, I get online and, and someone call you online or send you a picture online. Next thing you do, you will go to Hawaii and marry somebody. You know? <laughs> somebody say amen. amen. And let me tell you something that happens to the best of us. What happens to? Father, no, you're going quiet. I got all y'all tonight. I had one of my ministers tell me, I met someone in Africa. I say, well. They say, Africa. I say, well. Africa. I say, in the name of Jesus. Africa. How you met him? Online. I say, what? And they didn't just say they met him. They won't marry him. I say, in the name of Jesus, slow down. What I say? I say, in the name. It ain't that you can't meet somebody in a different place. It ain't it means that y'all can't get a connection. But it means that certain things, we got to find out how did you meet them? Where did you meet them? How old are they? What's going on? What is the undercurrent? What you ain't telling me about this relationship? Is this a relationship? Is it really your friend? Are you going to visit a friend? Are you engaged in calling it a friendship and just telling me what you want me to hear? But as past good, Amanda, because again, you are what? Justify. Tell somebody, stop justifying. Justification will only make you lose. I need a break. You don't need a break, nothing. You got a plan. I need a break from ministry. You let me tell you, I need a break from ministry. <laughs> I need a break from ministry. I need a break, Bishop. I need a break. I've been doing so much. I need a break. Everything. You don't need no break. You got stuff going on with you. <laughs> Somebody clap your hand and give God a prayer. You don't need no break. A lot of us need a break from work. Why don't you take a break from work? Because you know no worky, no eaty. Why you ain't taking, you need a break from work? Why you go to work? You're working all day. Why you don't take a break from work? Well, I do take a break. You're not for long. <laughs> Only Odise got it. Let's ride Odise. The rest of them, they mad now, Odise. You pray for me, Odise. You better go in the end of the session. What verse am I on? 21, but the people took of the spoil, the sheep, the oxen, and the chief of things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice. He's sticking to his story. Y'all ever met somebody that stick to their story and refuse to change it? They know they're lying, but they refuse. <laughs> Ever met someone, Denise, you ever met somebody that they refuse to change their story? This is my story and I'm sticking with it. That's what he did. Listen, lie, who he lying on now? He lying on the people and the Lord. Lying on the Lord. Who are lying to? Tell somebody, stop lying. Y'all, it's funny, but it's the truth, amen? Somebody, it's funny, but it's the truth. The Bible says, wherefore then, and some, and Samuel, and Samuel 21, but the people took of the spoil. We read that. 22, and Samuel said, had the Lord as great delight in the burnt offering and sacrifice. Because he kept saying sacrifice to the Lord. So he's saying to him, he using his own words against you. How many of you know God will use your own words against you? Somebody say amen. amen. That's why you got to be careful what come out of your mouth. Because God will use your own words against you. 
That's why your judgment comes out of your mouth. That's why you got to be careful who you judge. Oh. Be careful who you judge. Because who you judge, the same thing you say is going to be the same thing you got to be deal with. Say, live long enough. That's why I always, y'all don't always hear me say, in Jesus' name or by the grace of God. L listen to me talk long enough. You have to have the sense in your mind that you're still alive and you're not past anything as long as you're alive. Don't ever think you're past nothing. I can't say that enough. Because you don't ever know what you will do until you're tested enough. Say amen. Let me tell you when test comes. Test comes with the trial. Samuel Ibokwa, I see I'm about to shift. We're about to go. Watch this. Samuel gave Saul the command, go into Agai, kill everything. He wasn't an Agai yet. He said, kill everything. Like, sure, I can kill everything. I can get rid of everything. When I get in that town, everything, I could kill everything. I got this. Guess what? When he got in, his eyes saw something totally different. He said, I, I can kill that, but not that. <laughs> you see I change? When he was outside of it, I got this. When you were inside of it, how many of you know a whole lot change? Oh, that's so good, Duran. So in other words, it's easier said than done. So you never say what you wouldn't do. You never say, I can't believe they did that. You say, by the grace of God, God give me wisdom, God keep me, because you never know what you can do until you're in it. <laughs> say amen. It's easy to say you ain't gonna lie to the police until they pull you over. Did you know you were speeding? No. Did you see that stoplight? No, officer. Did you know one of your tail's light was out? My tail light out? Which one? You know exactly it was out. But guess when the liar came out? So guess what? Liar was in you the whole time. Guess what brought it out? Oh, y'all look like this. You don't put yourself. Somebody, but I just fell into lust. Get out of here. Every man is tempted when he's drawn away by his own. You got lust in you. By his own lust and entice. It just takes the test to bring the lust out of you. And God has just shown you what's still in you that has to die. But you got to recognize why you say confess. God, I'm struggling with lust. God, I'm struggling with liking so and so. God, I'm struggling with forgiving so and so. God, I'm struggling with envy. I'm struggling with jealousy. God, forgive me. God, I repent of it. And call out what you got in you. Call it out. When you go into prayer, let me say this. Define what is in you. If you're lusting after Harry, say, Lord, I'm lusting after Harry. If you're lusting after Lucy, say, Lord, I'm lusting after Lucy. Call it out. If you had sex, say, God, I had sex. Say, where you had it. With, I didn't call nobody online. Say to God where I did it. Say, God, the time you did it, confess it. Call it out. Confess the sin. Call it by name. That's just a nit tip there. If you want to grow and want to change. But if you're entertaining it, if you're making excuses, if you're justifying, God can't use that kind of heart. Recon and don't blame daddy, don't blame mommy. Say, God, I am out of order. And you got to fix this in me. And want it to be fixed. How do I know I want it to be fixed? You got to find accountability. You got to find someone you could trust and talk to. I don't care how dirty you think it is. Find someone and tell them, how dirty it is. How what? But don't confess to someone who, on the same level. Confess up. So you find a pastor, you find Pastor Coco, you find Pastor Elliot, you find my wife and confess. I don't care how dirty. If you went and you had three abortions, you had one last week, last month, and come the next month you had it again, and I'd go to someone's, I had an abortion, I did it, I messed up. I don't care how dirty it is. Confess it. Because when you start justifying it in your heart, it starts to get worse. I pray somebody in this room hear me tonight. So the Lord is saying to us tonight, don't justify. Let me tell you what happened. This was because of time. When he began to justify it, the Bible says God rejected him. Everything he could have been, and that's when David became king. It became king, both sin now. The difference is David stayed king. He had to deal with the consequences of what he did. 
but he stayed king. God never rejected David because David's heart, David never blamed the people. You can't blame the people you lead. You can't blame the man you marry. You can't blame the woman you marry. Hello, honey, I heard you. You can't blame the people you marry. You married them. You came to the altar, God blessed them. You can't blame them. You play a part in that marriage. So you can't say to them, God, this is what they did. God goes, if, and if you find it anywhere in the Bible, please show me. It's a perfect example. Saul, God went to Saul, and he asked Saul, this is what you did. And then what Saul did, Saul blamed the people. But God never dealt with the people. He dealt with Saul. First. God will always make you deal with you. Y'all could not hear that. You could let somebody try to change that subject. You could let somebody tell you something different. God will always make you deal with you. I tried going to God with phone. When we phone first get married, I said, I gone. I gone outside. When I gone outside, God said, where you going? I said, I gone. God said, where you going? That's your house. Where you sleep in the car? Where you going? I had to turn my little self right around and go right back in the house. And you know the Holy Spirit dealt with me? He said, take the beam out of your own eye before you try to take it of hers. I said, yes, God. He made me deal with me. Most marriages fail and relationships fail. Church fail. People leave churches because they never deal with them. It's always somebody else's fault. And that's the nature of the beast. Adam blamed Eve. Eve blamed the serpent. The serpent, he had nobody to blame because he would have blamed somebody too. He was the last stop. The question is, when you leave here tonight, who are you going to blame? And then in blaming them, which you can justify, that's why they did it. Some of us are 45. How are you going to be 45, 30, still blaming mommy and daddy, and they dead? How can mommy and daddy, who dead and gone, still be at fault? For what you know better to do. Yeah, mommy and daddy didn't do all they should have done. They didn't do all they were supposed to do as parents. But they ain't there no more. Now what you can do? So the rest of your life, you can blame mommy or daddy for the mistakes you're making? Come on. That's justification. You married the person that's mommy or daddy's fault? Well, if mommy had a better relationship and showed me a better example, then I would have known how to marry the right person. Get out of here. You justify it. You're looking for somebody to blame. There's a time you got to grow up and make the right choice. Somebody clap your hands. <laughs> Hard message, right? Hard message, right? But you know what? It's truth. What it is? Okay, let's try it again. Hard message, right? But guess what? It's truth. What can set us free? What can set us free? What can set us free? So you could either want to hear the truth or not. But it's the truth that's going to set you free. And you got to determine, do I want to be free or do, am I going to justify? And I want you all to hear me clearly. If you justify, come Shadrach, you will not be able to receive the promises of God. Because, say why? Justification means you only want to please you. You have no idea. You don't care nothing for others. And all God's, let me say, say this too. All God's kingdom about is, is about others. God's kingdom is founded upon putting others before you. So what do you see you to the kingdom if you only won't please you? I'll say it again. What do you see you to the kingdom if you only won't please you? That's why Saul had to be rejected. Because the only person he cared about was him as king. The question is tonight, who do you care about more than you? Most marriages fail because people go into it. You could never find the right person if you still care about only you. Because in marriage, that's why marriage is so tough. Because you got to die to you. So how you can go into marriage only caring for you? <laughs> Oh, this is so good. Well, he didn't do this and she didn't do that. Well, when did it become about you? You're justifying. Ministry is not about you. I 
That's why we fail in ministry because we're thinking what we could get, what I could get, what I could get, what I could get. What is for me? What's 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 for me? And then when we don't get what we want no more, what happened? We gone. Because you know why we gone? Because it was all about you. It can't be about you and you might get married. You will fail every time. It can't be about you in ministry. Most people who are offended, they're offended because what they wanted, they didn't get. It didn't happen the way they wanted, and they were offended. That's about you. It can't be about you. I tell them off. How you win? How you win by telling somebody off? How do you win by cutting somebody else down? When we need each other, how do you win? How did Saul win by blaming the people who he was supposed to lead? This is good stuff, Pastor Elliot. So pleasures, y'all, and fulfilling self and sexual pleasures, that's all about you pleasing self. That's you. You won't satisfy you. Don't give him none. See how long he stays. Don't give her none. See how long she stays. It's good not to have a relationship based on sex and you know what, what the relationship is built on. When it starts getting sexual, then it gets lost. Oh, that's so good. That's why God tells us not to have sex before marriage. He was wise in telling us that. Because he wanted us to understand relationship was more than sex. And women, you don't want to seduce a man to have sex with you because somebody could seduce better than you. Did he just say that? I say that in church. You don't want to seduce a man. How, you think your seduction is the only seduction going on? If you bad with seduction, there's a sister that thinks she better than you. So you don't want to win him with seduction. And guys, you don't want to win her either with seduction, thinking, man, I got her, I got her, I got her wrapped. Really? What about when she becomes unwrapped? And then she understands that there's more to relationship. She's gone. Because a woman, may you may get her sexually, but she ain't going to stay because of sex. Because women grow. They grow in wanting more and desiring more and, and responsibility and knowing things. And that the sex will be for a while, but as she grows, it won't be enough. Oh, I wish I... Women, if you know I'm telling the truth, stand. Women grow faster than men. Women grow faster than men. Oh, most men ain't here. I'm telling you, women grow faster than men. When men, when we on 10, they on 90. I'm 100% right. Women grow faster than men, I'm telling you. In their mentality and, and their responsibility, they think ahead. They think about bills, how this can be done. They think ahead, they plan. Women plan, they think about how the nest can be, how the house can be. They plan, they stay, they plan. We, us, we don't plan the way they plan. So as she grows, if you build that on relationship, on sex alone, it will not last, men. As she grows, she can want clothes and food. She'll be like, what you doing? Go pay that bill. Come see me after the bill paid. Oh, y'all think I'm joking. Is the rent paid? Do you got a car? Are we driving? Are you pampers home? Baby got food? Baby ain't got no food. Well, you better go get some food. After the food, come see me. She's always, that's the woman. Tonight, don't leave here justifying. Tonight, leave here saying, God, I want to be better. If you want to be better, say, Lord, I want to be better. Everybody stand on your feet. I, I don't know why I preached that message tonight, but the Lord had it. Who had it? Oh, y'all, y'all mad now. I know y'all mad. Who had it? The Lord had it. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, my one clap. Everybody clap your hand. Give God a prayer. Thank you, my one clap. Thank you, my one clap. <laughs> Thank you.
David remain king. Coming to this altar, you all having to repent of how is so key. Wanting to change, wanting to be better, wanting to be accountable and not justifying will help you go where God wants to take you. Will help you do what? Go let that relationship be made more. Hear me, don't just hear me today, hear me a year from now. Because you can be tempted. This is a young church, young people in the church, you got hormones, hormones jumping out the ceiling. I hear some old people say, I got hormones too and it's jumping out the ceiling. But that means let the relationship be tested to see what it's built on. If you hear me tonight, take a step. Let it be proven. Let it be what? And the blessing will come. I'm telling you, a lot of people, Shanda, are not blessed, not because God don't want to bless them. Only God knows what's in a person's heart. Whoever said, yeah, you really have to hear me. I had a marriage recently, just recently. I had a marriage, and the wife would come to me, I don't want to be with him. 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 You know why she didn't want to be with him? Because her mind was on somebody else. But you would have looked at the marriage and you would have think to yourself, it's him. Very good, Stacy. That's what she was making it. She was making it look like it was him, but it wasn't him. She had a mind on somebody else. And I said, look at this trickster, the devil, not the person. I said, look at this. Most people in here would have fallen and think it was him, it was him, it was him. But you know what I was fighting for? The state. I say, stay. I say, stay in this mind. Stay in this mind. And then you know what she would do? They, this strategically what she would do is why some of y'all got to be so careful. She would find other people in the church who was also going through marriage problem and she would go talk to them. After I would tell a fight for her marriage and none of them had the wisdom, that's why I'm the leader, or the sense to know JB that her mind was on something else until the Lord showed me in a dream, Stacy, what was really going on. The Lord revealed to me verbatim. She didn't come to me. She didn't tell me nothing. They didn't tell me nothing. The Lord revealed to me what was happening. I said, devil, you're such a liar. I'm not telling you what I'm guessing. I tell you what I know, it was somebody, it was somebody else, the, but that, that, an illusion. But they were finding people in church who were going through other relationship problems and saying, I'm thinking but not being, I'm thinking but not staying. And they'd be like, yeah, I, I don't leave mine. Yeah, yeah, boy, I don't know, you got to do what you got to And they feeding each other not knowing it was all trick. What was it? It was a trick. That's why you got to be careful who's drawn to you and why they're drawn. If you all hear me tonight, it will change your life. Learn to go to the altar and hear the word of the Lord here. Learn to go to the altar and hear the word. Saul got the word, but he, he justified because his eyes saw what he wanted. And that should teach you a lesson. If Saul could justify, you ain't no king. Imagine how much you can justify. Well, nobody never treat me like he treats me. He's so nice. He nobody never treats me. He makes me feel so good. He treat, he opens the door for me. Of course he gonna open the door for you. You'd be surprised he ain't coming over your night and put a pillow at your head. Just lay, I can buy you a pillow. Just lay it. All the treatment coming because the devil kind of come. He comes as an angel of light. It's to set you off course. He can buy you your favorite perfume. How did you know? The devil knows. He can pay for your nails to get done. He can want pinch your nails. How do you know? Because the devil knows what you like, so he can cater to you. If you hear me tonight, take a step. Y'all better wake up. Say that again, Pastor, Pastor Coco. Come on the stage with me. Wake up, wake up, wherever you are. Somebody say, wake up, wake up. Say it again. Say, wake up, wake up wherever you are every night we come to Tuesday night we get commands you know when we come to Bible City, we get the Nike the Nike raise your hands Nike Nike athletics raise both hands right there right there how old are you both hands raise but I tell you put your hand in your pocket boy how old are you pull your mask down play football yeah even if you don't like football play football what I just say I just gave you a command that mean push somebody with them things is you pushing John them things is being the ground you push Put somebody's sled, push them sled, push a sled. You push your sled right into billionaire ministry. 
You push your, you push your sledge, you teach your mother to be dead free. Come, come, big boy, come, big boy. I know you technological and all that, but God ain't give you the size for nothing. Push a sledge. Lift your hands right there. Don't be nervous. Stand right there. Come on, you can face me. He's such a good boy. You have a good son. He's a good boy. Raise your hands. Push somebody's sledge. What'd I say? Jog. Push a sledge. I won't go to an NFL game. What I won't go to? I wait, come, come, you come to. I won't go to an NFL game. Why are you doing with your eyebrow? Raise your hand. There's me and you in this building. Put somebody sledge. Join some. Don't worry about him. Me and you. Join some football club and put somebody sledge. You hear what I say? All it takes is two, three seasons. You a millionaire for the rest of your life. You could go to every Chinese restaurant you want to go and eat every lobster you want to eat, eat every duck you want to eat. Take mama for a duck. Take mama for some chicken. Take mama for chicken fried rice. You hear what I say? Listen to me, stop, I want to say this, stop letting some of these kids, there's nothing wrong with them knowing what their interest is, but there's nothing wrong with them too with helping them define their interest. Make sense? Give me an eyeball, give me an eyeball. Put somebody sledge. And anytime you get mad, you think every time mama make me mad, push out them. Make sense? Except get him in some club, some something. Encourage it. Amen? Raise your hands. I won't, I won't go to a Dallas game, Dallas Cowboys, Tampa Bay, Buccaneers, that's them. Father, we cover this room. Don't justify and say, I like technology. I like technology too. Technology right on that court, play in the play. Amen? Drop a play. That's the technology we want. Drop a play. You play one football game, man, join the Dallas, you draw the Dallas Cup. Watch me. You draw the, you become a Tampa Bay Buccaneer, your mother be like, that's my son, technology. <laughs> she ain't got to pay another bill in her life. Look at me. Could you imagine buying her her house? Buying her her first beautiful car? Raise your hands. You, that's what you do. Father, we cover this church. Somebody say, stop justifying. Say it again. Say, stop justifying. I know y'all ain't want to hear this kind of man. Y'all want me to give y'all goosebumps tonight. Look, take another step. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. When Fong and I dated y'all, I made sure Fong got home at a certain time. Say why? Because the freaks come out at night. Did I, was that too plain? So it's when it's when the clock strikes a certain hour, I was like, time for you to strike the cards. Time to go. Time to do what? And guess what she did? And she didn't want to go, you know. She wanted to hang out. And I'd be like, time to go. And she never left until I told her it was time. So guess what, y'all? Willie heard me. You know, he can't hear nothing. He busts out laughing. She never left until I told her. So you know what that means? No. That means if I wanted to stay later. She'd stay later. If I wanted to stay later, what? Stay later. Come here, Denise. I must call you Stacey, but God can use Denise tonight. Come here, Denise. I think she can handle it a little bit. Come here. She stayed later. Rub my head a little bit, rub my head. Yeah. Yeah, rub it, rub it, the back, the back, the back. Rub the head. Yeah. That's later. You understand? Y'all see later? Later we be getting closer and closer. And then when I married her, she'd be like, I know you preacher. I know you preacher. I know what you did to me before we got married. They may not know. But I know you preacher. Preacher. Let's go, go where? You don't tell me what to do. You can't lead me because you didn't lead me right outside. How are you going to lead me right now? Make sense? Y'all sure? Look, y'all need to, let's close your eye. So some of y'all in here that won't have sex before you get married and think, oh, I, I don't I don't have the sex before I get married. Now we in marriage. You don't mess up on that respect. You, A woman, she's strong and it will be hard for you to get her respect in marriage. 
Is that true? Yeah. It'll be hard for you to get her respect in mind. So you think, man, I can have sex with her and then I can marry her. Okay, that respect will be hard to get in marriage. If she could get you out of marriage, she can say, what you can do for me in marriage? I ain't gonna listen to you now. Then you can get frustrated. After you get frustrated, then you can want divorce. Then you can blame me. Bishop, why you marry us? <laughs> you ain't tell me about none of that stuff that was going on before you get in there. Close your eyes. Father, we cover this room. First off, God, we repent. Somebody say, Lord, I repent for my disobedience. I've rebelled. I've been disobedient to your command. I have done what I wanted to do. Lord, this is me. This ain't nobody else. I made the decision. If you mean that tonight, take a step forward. If you mean it, say with your eyes closed, say, Lord, I repent. I don't want to be like that. Say, give me a repentive heart. Say, remove a heart of stone and give me a heart of flesh. Please jump, close your eyes. If you don't mean that, please mean it. Disobedience can cause you to go to hell. Disobedience can cause you to go to hell. You don't want to go to hell. I know I don't want to go to hell. I want to make heaven. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. If you want to make heaven, take a step. So now we repent. Now we, now we do what? Everybody say that word. Now we do what? That means the slate is clean. That's right, Amanda. The slate is clean. What you do now after you leave here, go sneak and finish justify, that's on you. You want to play them kind of games? That's on you. But no, it's you that's hindering the blessing, not God. Not me. Stop blaming jump for you. Stop blaming me for you. It's your secret disobedience that's stopping it. It's your secret intentions that are stopping the manifestation. Stop blaming me for you. Things you know you should get rid of. People who you know should not be in your phone book. People who you know should not have a key for you, to your door. How they get a key to your house. You had the, you're so bold you made a key to the house. You're that bold that they got a key to your door. That they could come over any time. That's too bold for me. That is too bold for me. Somebody say, God, have mercy on me. Father, I cover this church under the blood of Jesus. I pray, oh God, that you forgive us for known and unknown sins. Hidden sins, hidden intentions, hidden motives. We repent of that, God. We want to be better because we want everything you have for us. Somebody say, I want everything you have for me, God. Stop. My word of the Lord tonight to everyone in this room is stop justifying. Stop just. I said to everyone. I didn't say just to you. I say to everyone. Stop justifying. Stop it. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. When you get him or get her, you can do the same thing. You will justify. And then you can recognize it was not, uh, it was you. It was you all the time. Sometimes, I want you all to hear this. This is the truth. Eyes closed. I'd be so glad when some people get married. I'd be so glad when some people leave this church too. So they could learn that it was not me. Some parents say, glad, be glad when children leave home, you know. So they could learn what it is to be on their own. Some parents say, be glad when their children have children. So they could learn what it is to be a parent. So they would see why their parents did what they did. Am I talking right, y'all? Some parents are glad when you get a job. They want you to work. So you could see what it is to work a nine to five. What it is to make your own money. Have your own responsibility. 
Father, tonight, give us ears to hear. From the pulpit to the door, from the door to the pulpit, and give us eyes to see. So I say in the name of Jesus. Say it again. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again. Say in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Get ready to give your best. What I say? Tell me what I said to you. Find some club. Go jogging and get with Jonathan. Find out what gym you could go to. Find some club. Play football. You hear what I said to you? You won't have to worry about another. You know what it is to be able to take care of your mother and buy your brother everything they want for the rest of your life? Play some football. You hear what I said? Okay. Mama, did I give you some instruction? Mama, did I give him some instruction? If I got to find a summer camp, we find a summer camp together. Get him in there. I could, that boy is your blessing. I've been thinking about him from Sunday. Y'all get ready to give your best to the Lord. <laughs> how about ran off the stage tonight? Let me show you how much in the spirit you are tonight. I was talking to Mother Diana last night about dating, about why you shouldn't do certain days before marriage like having sex mm -hmm. and touching Go because ahead. there's no grace and protection attached to that action outside of marriage. Because when you marry, there's grace and protection attached to that action. But when you do it outside of marriage, there's no grace and protection attached to that. And you set the wrong stuff off. I said, this is, this is how specific it was. I told Mother Diana, when Bishop was dating Miss Fong, he told her to go home at a certain time. He didn't have her there late at night. He the pastor when nobody knows she was there. He sent her home, home to set a standard. Go home. I said that last night. That's God. That's God. That's God. That's specific. That's God. Let's get our envelopes. Y'all write on your envelopes tonight. Lord, help me not to justify. Did tonight help anybody? to you. Jonathan, help that young man find a, 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 a summer camp to you jump, jump, a football camp, teach him how to work, give him a workout regimen. Two of the best of everything. Amen? Lord, please don't reject us tonight. Please don't take your Holy Spirit from us. That's right, Amanda, I feel you. Please lead us and guide us. Don't justify. Somebody say, don't justify. In the name of, very good, Pastor Coco. I'm glad you shared that. Miss Nelt, Miss, Miss um, Nelta, right there behind you, Takeda. Miss Vida, Miss Vida, your daughter is a blessed young lady. You see how Takeda is blessed? The Lord has the same thing in mind for her. He has the same thing in mind for her. You, you believe that? Do you believe that? I believe the same thing. And the young women in here, y'all have to surround her. Help groom her. Help take her. I ask Miss Vita to take her out. Like help minister to her. How many of you know young people deal with a lot of stuff? These young people are different in our time and in their time. If we dealt with the stuff we dealt with in our time, how many of you know it's ten times worse now? These cartoons got stuff going on on the inside of it. All we had in our day was Tom and Jerry yeah. and, and Road Runner. These kids got Beavis and Butthead. This is a different generation, y'all. They need us. Y'all ain't got to hear me. Do they need us? These kids need us. Um, 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 we got this young man's son, Daryl's son on this camera. How old are you? 16. How many of you know 16? You don't know your head from your tail. All you feel is hormones going on and don't know where it's coming from. Oh, I wish I had somebody read. And you can't tell a woman. So some of the young men in here, you got to tell them. You got to pull them on the side. Take them out. Take them. Tell them, hey, man, what's going on? Daryl, stay. Watch your sons, Daryl. Watch them. Watch them. Even the young one. Watch him. Either that one right on the side of you. Watch them. Not because they're 12 and 13. They don't know what's going on. Is that right, Pastor Elliot? 
watch these kids. They know more than we think. And then they got access to more. Our phone used to be them home phone with the cord. Their phone, their TV go with them every place they go. So you have to be accountable what they watching, what they seeing. And I, oh, I want to say this too. I told Fortnite, no more Fortnite. No more Fortnite. I, Chai, the other day, he did something with Fortnite and he, he was aggressive. He was more aggressive than he would. I want you all to hear this than I normally would see him. And I asked the Lord, I was thinking, I said, where did he get that from? And the Holy Spirit dropped in my spirit. It was the fortnight. And I started to think, I said, that fortnight with all that shooting and killing. I said, it was too, I said, Chai, you could play Madden. You could play Madden is the football, I think. Yeah. The basketball, but fortnight, y'all, no fortnight. Somebody say, no fortnight. It teaches too much aggression. Y'all got to hear me in the spirit. It teaches too much. I've taken Fortnite is over for him. Say it's over. He did something that was very aggressive. And I know Chai is not aggressive. And I asked the Lord, I said, where did that come from? And the Lord said it was the Fortnite. It was the Fortnite. And imagine how many people play games and do stuff and parents don't know where that aggression is coming from. Or who's speaking into them. They said with the Fortnite, people play the game and could tell them different things. Let's stand, y'all. So we got to be careful. No, somebody say, no fortnight. Now I'm telling y'all, anybody who know what in this room, say, Chai, the bishop's son playing it because he ain't playing it no more. That was one too much aggression. Hallelujah. Somebody say, amen. That was one too much. One time, one time, I said, Lord, but thank God I was noticing. And the way I noticed, listen, Naya to, Adonaya told me. My wife didn't tell me. Tell me. <laughs> Adonaya told me what he did. And when she told me what he did, I was surprised. I called him, I said, you did this? And he said, yeah. I said, oh. And I said, I said, why did you do that? And then the, I meditated on it all day. I said, Lord, where did this aggression come from? What did made him so aggressive? And the Lord dropped in my spirit. It was the fortnight game. And when the Lord told him, I said, Chai, he said, no fortnight for you. I said, I, do we, I, somebody say, in the name of Jesus. Our, our games and these children games was different. Our game was Donkey Kong and Pac-Man. Am I telling the truth? Donkey Kong and Pac-Man and them little things, the little, the little fat thing, the stingray thing, you shoot the things in the air. Yeah. These kids, they got shooting, explosion, blood. Jonathan, tell me there's a game where they shoot and the blood just be splatting everywhere. What's that game called? Call the Duty. Call the Duty. Anybody ever heard of Call the Duty? Call the Duty. Yeah. He'll never know what Call the Duty is till Jesus come. <laughs> He'll be called to the duty of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Call to duty. No, fuel the duty. Y'all believe I'm joking? Fortnite is gone. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. These kids learn aggression from somewhere. They learn to curse from somewhere. I don't curse, so where you learning to curse? Yeah. You ain't see me doing nothing aggressive, so what you, where you, how you get that aggression? Yeah. And I tell Chai, if you don't see me do it, why are you doing it? If you ain't see me saying it, why are you saying it? So where you getting it from? Somebody say amen. amen. Father, I cover this under the blood of Jesus. We bless this. Y'all to make me change the whole subject. I'm a mad, <laughs> not <I'm> mad. <laughs> Father, we bless this seed now in the name of Jesus. We sanctify it. We pray, God, that you bless it and God honor every heart that gave. We pray for increase over this church, oh God. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. Are we blessed, y'all? Yeah. Are we blessed, y'all? Is Miss Vita's daughter here? Bring, come, come, Miss Boot. Come, Miss Boot. Come, Miss Boot. Come out the boot. The Lord, she's taking so long. Let Tisha get it, Jamie. Let Tisha get it. Let Tisha get it. Let Tisha get it. Let Tisha get it. Come out the boot. Come, come out the boot, Miss Lady. Who taking you so long? Come here out the boot. Come, come out the boot. She's such a beautiful girl, too, Miss Vita. She's a beautiful girl. You got a jam here. 
Somebody say nothing but the best. Stand right there. Say nothing but the best. I'm going to give you a scripture. You can look at me. I'm going to give you a scripture. Raise your hands high. But I want you to write down what the scripture means. A full page. To whom much is given, much is required. To whom much is, and you don't help him, Miss Vida. Let us study it. To whom much is given, much is required. You got that? I want a full page. Just one sheet of paper and what that means. One sheet of paper and what it means. If you get it, it will change your life. To whom much is given, much is required. Anytime, like, like you're beautiful, you're, you're, you're light skin, you're growing good, comes responsibility. And sometimes you wonder why can other people get away? Because some people's responsibility are different than others. You got to look at, don't look at the back. Papa trying to help you. So we'll look at other kids and why other kids could do it and I can't. It's because some people's responsibility is different. That's why Takeda went through a lot of what she went through. She left home early at 18. No mother, no father. She ain't had a Miss Vita. She wished she had a Miss Vita. She ain't never had it. And she still don't have it. But because she went through a lot, it's why God gave her a lot. See, we, we always look at what she had, but we never look at what she went through. To whom much is given, much she was given, much so she was required, a lot was required of her. Does that make sense? So you don't get the a lot without going through some things. To whom much is given, much is required. That's your, that's your scripture for the week. Study it. Ask God to show you. Oh, God. Stand behind a taquita. Ask him to show you what it means. When you start to understand that it's so much bigger than your mother, so much bigger than the church, it's about the plan and the will of God, that's when you begin to understand why it's such a responsibility. You follow me? So to whom, sometimes we wonder why isn't dad there? Why isn't, I think most of us who were called didn't have dad there. Most of us in here had dad or mom. Most of us. Jonathan, he had dad like that. Just had mom. But now he's in the NBA. So to whom much is given, much is required. Shanda, Shanda left home early. She didn't have dad. Her dad came to her later. But Shanda's now going to school to one day have her own bank. Amanda, did you have dad? <laughs> and she raising four dynamic sons in ministry. So, oh, she say, she. <laughs> Did she just stop me, y'all? Did she just, did she just? <laughs> you understand? So just get that. Just know that sometimes that's why it's, and don't let her run from her pain. Pain is good. Don't shelter her from the pain. Let her feel that. Let her feel the, the blows. Because it will teach her she get older to handle blows. Do you understand? Because if we shelter them from pain, when it, it'll harm them sometimes. Don't shelter her from the pain. You can guide her through the pain, help minister to her through the pain, but don't try to protect her from the pain because pain can always come. Does that make sense to anybody? Pain can come. Say amen. Amen. I don't, I don't try to shelter Chai from the pain. I help him to understand why pain comes. Make sense? Jacob, that makes sense to you, Jacob? Don't shelter him from the pain. Say amen. But you're not going to miss, baby. Two of the best of everything. That's what God told me. He told me I, I'm going to give you two of the best of everything. You are part of that. You hear me? You are part of that. Father, bless this seed. Honor every heart. Say in Jesus' name. But don't justify. Amen. Raise your hands to heaven. God is good. Tonight was good, Chanda. Oh, we got cake. We got cake. We got flowers. We got cake. We got flowers. You know, I didn't see that. I just saw it just now when I turned. I, I didn't see that before. All the birthday people come. All the birthday people come. Anastasia, y'all y'all should see her sweeping the church today with her long hair. She was sweeping it by the boot and just smiling. Then I come in the door, right, Chris? And when I came in the door, she said, today is my birthday. I said, no wonder you sweeping with such a smile. She was happy. Take your mask. She was happy all day. We have, look at my brother, Joey. His birthday's tomorrow, y'all. Oh, 
Chris's birthday is today. Is that right, Chris? His birthday is today, and Anna's birthday was yesterday. So I clap your hands for them. Listen, I could not be honored enough to have them in church. Chris, your little boy is growing so good. He's growing into, and he really loves the Lord. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Just really thank God for him. Keep him guarded. Because he turns 19. How old? How many of you know he think he grown? 19 is when you start thinking, you know what, Daddy? I'm going to New York. I'm going to see you. So y'all cover him. Do what? 19 years. That boy, I remember when he was two. Nine, 19. Take your mask off, Mr. 19-year-old. He won't date now. He won't date. Hold your head up. You used to be smiling on the side when you'd be looking at that phone trying to see who you could call. And Anastasia, y'all, Shadrach on the count of three. We're going to sing happy birthday to them. Y'all singing, this is their birthday. Y'all let them hold their cake. Let them hold their cake and sing. Let them hold their cake as they sing. Y'all holding that cake like that's y'all own. That's their cake. Give them their cake. One, 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 two, three. Happy, happy birthday. Sing, Shadrach. Happy birthday to you. Sing, Shadrach. Happy birthday, dear everybody. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Clap your hands, y'all. Happy birthday. Blow out your candles. Listen, we got a lot of cake. Will we have? Please don't leave it. We got three cakes and they ain't want to take it all home. I'm sure my brother, you know, I'm sure y'all could eat these two cakes because he could eat that by himself. <laughs> Lift your hands to heaven. Let me bless the food. We got food tonight. What is the food in the back, y'all? Shanda made. Some shrimp. Shrimp. Alfredo. Alfredo. And baked ziti. Baked chicken. Woo. Corn. And ooh, ooh. Raise your hands, y'all. We eating good tonight. Y'all, please get a plate. Please get a plate. Don't let Shanda Shrimp Alfredo go. Don't let that fried chicken go. Let them know you appreciate their cook. I called Shanda. They say, what you doing? She said, I'm cooking for tonight. So that's some good food. Somebody say some good food. Father, we bless the food. God, sanctify it. God, thank you for everybody that came tonight. I pray that the word will find good ground. Lord, let us grow from the word. Let us not take this word lightly, God. You said faith cometh by hearing and hearing by your word. Give us ears to hear tonight. Help us never to take this bread for granted. For your word is the bread of life. We need this bread to live. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from your mouth. So God, sanctify the meal. Thank you for our house that we could come and have real dinner. That's right, Odis. Thank you, Jesus, for Tuesdays and Fridays and, and Sundays. May we never take it for granted. Thank you for what you've given, Jim. If you believe that tonight, take a step. Thank you for what you've given us. Help us not to be bitter, but be better. So that's right, Odis. Thank you for that. Say, help. So, somebody say, Lord, help me not to be bitter, but to become better. Say it in me and say, in Jesus' name. We dismiss from bring somebody Friday, y'all. Stop coming in here by yourself. Next time, if I see y'all in here, bring one new person. I can leave all y'all in here. I'm going home and I can leave all y'all in here to look at each other. I've been looking at y'all too much. I'm ready to see somebody new. Bring me some new faces. Bring some new people to the church. Bring some new fish. Don't bring me no sharks. Don't bring me no stingrays. Bring me no fish you won't eat or clean.
Stop hating and dreaming.